1 Corinthians 11. Now, just after Corinthians, you get Galatians. Maybe you should open Galatians 1 as well. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord. Now, I like the way Paul starts. He says, I have received of the Lord. In other words, for those who know, he didn't receive it from a man. He didn't get it from Peter. He didn't get it from... James, he didn't get it from Stephen or Philip. He got it from the Lord. And he proves it when he was in front of the king in uh, uh, Acts chapter 26, verse 16. He says, For this reason, O king, the Lord Jesus appeared unto me and kept on appearing to me. In other words, Paul had a personal appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know that? In Acts chapter 9, remember when he was knocked off his horse and he saw in a bright light and he heard the voice of Jesus saying, Paul, why do you persecute me? Or Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Okay, now go to, just keep your finger there. I think Galatians 1 will help us. In verse 12, for Paul says, I neither received it of a man. Do you see there? Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, and profit in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, to reveal His Son in me, or to reveal... His son in me. Or to reveal his son in me. Or to reveal his son in me. Or to reveal his son in me. Okay? So change the emphasis every time and get the full revelation of God has a very, 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 very great desire to manifest himself in and through you. So Paul says, what I'm writing, I didn't receive it of a man, but I got it by a revelation of Jesus Christ. Hmm? So I received from the Lord. So Paul said this was a revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? And he calls it, for this reason, he appeared unto me. Hmm? And he kept on appearing to me. So he used the word appearance in Acts chapter 26. So let's read on. I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. This is my body. Now remember in John chapter 2, uh, when, when they came to the temple and said, Behold the stones and how great this building is. And Jesus said, break it down. And in three days, I will build it up. Okay? And he says, and these disciples did not know it until after his resurrection that he spoke of his body. So here in two, he says, the body is the temple. And he says, it was not revealed until after the resurrection. Hmm? So the resurrection revealed that the temple is the body. But here he says, take this bread, this is my body. Hmm? And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. This is the New Testament. In my blood. And then he says, this do in remembrance of me, and so you proclaim the Lord's death. Till he come. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 
For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For those who do not know the New Testament, the word sleep there is the word death. Many are dead. So people are weak, people are sick, and people die for one reason, not discerning the Lord's body. <laughs> so till he come, Paul uses two words. He uses the word revelation, and he uses the word appear. So I want to put there, by come, appear. And I want to use the word revelation. That'll more or less speak of the same thing in many scriptures in the Bible. So he says, if I do not discern the Lord's body, people are weak, people are sick, and people will die. So if I really discern the Lord's body, I will be strengthened. I will be healthy. And I will live. Okay? That's more or less the gospel message. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. For he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. So, Back to verse 26. You show the Lord's death till he come. Colossians 3. Let's do verse first. First verse 4. When Christ, who is our life. Okay, remember Paul says, for me to live is Christ. Okay, then Paul says, the life I now live, I live to the glory of God. Then Paul says, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that's alive in me. Okay, so different scriptures like that. So here he comes, he says, when Christ, who is our life? Okay, so what is my life? What gives me life? Who gives me life? Christ Jesus. So when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So mortify, therefore, your members. Verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things, the Amplified Bible and many other translations will say, set your mind on things above. So if ye be risen with Christ, set your mind on the things which are above. To a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Verse 2. Set your mind. Keep your mind set. On things which is above, in other words, the higher things. Verse 3, for you are dead. That's the old man. And your life is hid with Christ in God. So when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. If this is God, and Christ is in God, and they are you, you are hidden with Christ in God. So if Christ shall appear, if Christ appears, then you must also appear. then you also shall appear in glory. So let's look at that mind story quickly in 1 Peter, verse 11. He says, The prophets were searching out what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now remember, when Christ appears, when Christ shall appear, we shall also, or you shall also appear with him in glory. So here comes Peter, and he says, all the prophets of old prophesied. They looked forward to a time, talking about the Spirit of Christ in them, looked forward and prophesied about a time 
When what shall happen? When Christ shall be crucified, suffering, then the glory should follow. Okay, so here we comes something about the glory. Keep it in mind. Verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed, revealed sorry, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them who have preached the gospel unto you. You know, things which the, the angels desire to look into. Verse 13. Amplified Bible. So brace up your minds. Remember we just said set your minds. On that higher life thing. So brace up your minds. Set your hope holy and unchangeably. On the grace that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Okay, so Paul uses the word come, appear, and revelation. Peter says the prophets prophesied about the glory. First the cross by the body. And the blood, which referred directly to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay? So, so Peter says, the prophets prophesied, all of them, you should find Christ crucified somewhere in the prophets. Then flowing out of the crucifixion needs to come the glory. But this glory was not for their period of time. It was not for that period of time, but for us. Who's the us? Okay, we're going to find out. Who's this us? Was it 600 years ago for Martin Luther? You know, was it 500 years ago for the Anabaptists? Was it 100 years ago for the Pentecostals? Was it 40 years ago for the Charismatics? Who, who's this us? You know, who's this period of time that the prophesi- prophets prophesied about a certain glory? Now, think of the word glory and then about the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Christ appears, you shall also appear with him in glory. But our lives are hidden with Christ in God. So when Christ comes out of the God life type of thing and manifests himself, who's going to manifest him? You. Because you are hidden in Christ. Hmm? So everybody, oh, when Christ comes. Oh, at the second coming. When Christ comes again. Okay. So how's he going to come? How's he going to appear? How's he going to reveal himself? What is going to happen at the appearance of Christ? Is he going to come again as a single person? Then he must come to a certain country. To which country will he go to this time? Because Israel had their time and there is now no more Jew or Greek. For which kingdom will he come to? Because the kingdom of God is all across the earth. Where will he reveal his glory? Because the glory of the Lord shall cover all the earth. Okay, have you ever asked those questions? He can't come to an ethnical group. He can't come to a designated country. Because then it will not be a worldwide kingdom. It can't come for a specific group. Then it's not all nations and tongues and tribes and kindreds before the throne of God. Have you ever thought of it? Let's go to Ephesians 2. Now remember, Paul says to Colossians chapter 3, If ye then be risen with Christ... So you can't be risen if you didn't die. Did you die? If you didn't die, you're still your old ugly self. But if you died, you were risen into a new life. Romans chapter 6. And you proved it by being baptized. Hmm? So did you die in Christ? If you died in Christ, the old things have passed away and everything is new. So if you live to yourself, you're not living to Christ. But if you're living unto Christ, you're no longer living unto yourself. You see, God doesn't come and throw everything at the same time. But he writes it in the word. And everything in this book is a prophetic book. Because Paul, Paul, an apostle and prophet. So Peter was a prophet and a teacher. So was Paul. So all the New Testament was writers were prophets as much as was the Old Testament prophets. 
The one prophesied up to the resurrection of Christ, and the others prophesied about the glory that should follow. Okay, thank you. So now we must find out what is this prophecy of the New Testament of the glory that should follow. We now know the Old Testament prophesied about the cross. So was he crucified? So we're looking back to the cross of Christ. So what do we do when we break the bread and drink the cup? We show forth the Lord's death. Till what? Till he come. What is the coming called? The appearance. So when Christ appears, what's going to happen? We will appear with him. In glory. Are you saying? No, I'm saying, let's read. Ephesians 2. Verse 6 is a good one to start with. He has raised us up together. And made us sit together. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. Paul is writing something. But it's not for the people that's reading it. 2,000 years ago in Ephesus. He says, I'm writing this to you that you may know that in the ages to come, hmm, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Hmm. Okay. He says, it was not for their period of time. So it was for the ages to come. What is for ages to come? Show the riches of his glory. Oh, he adds another word there. Grace. What did Peter say in 1 Peter 1 verse 13? He says, so brace up your mind at the grace that shall be given you at the appearance or the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this grace is going to come to you in riches of glory at the revelation, at the appearance of Jesus Christ. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, say this is the time to know, what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints Okay, so now he adds another word. He says, this hope which is rich in glory, which will come with grace at the appearance or revelation of Christ, is something that we call an inheritance. And it's in the saints. Now, how can an inheritance be in you? An inheritance is something that you get when somebody died and he left you. But he calls this thing in the saints. He says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe, according to the working of his power, so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing of his gra the greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, two scriptures that we did is, if ye then be risen with Christ. The other one is, you died with him and you were raised together with him and you are seated with him in heaven. Remember? In heaven. Hmm? Now he says here, you must know this is, this is going to come to you with a shock. This rich glory, grace, hope, which is an inheritance in the saints, hmm? is coming to you by knowing the power of the resurrection. And he says, the same power that he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now, Romans 8, 11 says, If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
dwell in you, he's going to quicken your mortal body. So Colossians 3 verse 4, we did that says, you know, about this Christ appears, you shall appear with him in glory. That was verse 4. Verse 5 says, mortify, therefore your members which are on the earth. Here it comes, he says, he will quicken your mortal body. So in other words, the mortal stuff will go away. And if mortal go away, what happens to mortal? It becomes immortal. Huh? So if he's going to quicken your mortal body and the mortal must be taken out of the way according to Colossians, if we understand the resurrection, if we understand the appearance of Christ, then, okay. Let's read on. It's getting worse. Which he raised in Christ when he seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly. Did you see the places again is italics? Now you raised together and seated together with him in heavenly places. Far above principalities and stuff like that. Verse 22, has put all things under his feet, which is the head of, his, of himself. Verse 23, he says, and he's given Christ as the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Okay, here we had the body. This is my body. That was the breaking of the bread. But Jesus says, this body is my temple. And they'll only understand it after the resurrection. Now he says, but when God raised Christ from the dead, that same power is in you. And I want you to get knowledge of this. It's, it's going to cost a spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand that this is an inheritance. It's in the saints. It's the power that he raised Christ with from the dead. That power that seated Christ in the heaven. That power is now in you, making you the body. Which fills all in all. The Amplified says everything, everywhere with himself. Now, Colossians 2 verse 9 says, The fullness of the God, it dwells bodily in Christ. And he says, verse 10, But you are complete in him. Yeah. So the completeness is, you have the fullness of the Christ. But Kubis, can we have it as mortal beings? Yeah. Huh? That's why we're waiting for the appearance with grace that shall be revealed to us so that we can get a revelation and step into something greater than mortal. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. So we are born, the word begotten means born again. We are born again unto a hope. So I'm born again, Kubis, I got my BA, that's good. What are you born again for? To go for a hope. What is the hope? This hope is rich in glory. What is rich in glory? The appearance of Christ, which is where you with him in glory. That is the hope. Oh, no, my hope is to die and go to heaven. No, no, no. He's talking all the time about an appearance for those who are already in heaven. No, because my mother is in heaven. Your, your, your mother's spirit is in heaven. Your mother's not in heaven. We buried her. If your mother's spirit come here now, you will not recognize her because it's spirit. But when your mother comes out of the tomb, you quickly reckon, Mother! <laughs> Remember the witch of Ender when she called up Samuel and she thought the spirit's going to appear and Samuel came, she says to Saul, you know, why did you do this to me? And here came Sam, Samuel. <laughs> what are you doing here? That's why the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And to a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Are you ready? To an inheritance. 
incorruptible, that's a good word, undefiled, faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God. Okay, what's the power of God? That he used when he raised Christ from the dead. So something is kept by the resurrection power of Jesus. What is that? In inheritance. In the saints. So he says, I want you to know that you have an inheritance which is incorruptible. <laughs> so if the inheritance is in the saints, but this is a hope that is kept in heaven. Who's in heaven? You and I. So where we are, something is kept for us. It's an inheritance which is incorruptible. Oh. Incorruptible. It's kept by the power of God through faith unto the salvation, listen to this, ready to be revealed in the last time. Okay. So this whole thing, taking it from different scriptures tonight, this whole thing is kept. That's why it's called hope. So it's not yet revealed. It's kept. It's called hope. But it's ready to be revealed. Paul calls it ages to come. Peter calls it in the last time. Aww. So something must be revealed. Where? But how? Is it going to be a mist floating into the church? Or is it going to be this treasure is a hidden thing which is in us. Verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, so that the trial of your faith, remember, fight the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life, so that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth. There's the word perish. We have the word incorruptible. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We've got an inheritance which is incorruptible, which is kept in heaven, ready to be revealed in ages to come or the last time. He says, but this thing will come. Huh at the appearance of Christ. But when Christ appears, you also appear. So who's going to appear? How's it going to happen? Isn't this what creation is waiting for? Isn't this the full manifestation of the sons of God according to Romans 8? Verse 11 again. What manner of time the Spirit of Christ which is in them signified when he testified before and the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. It was revealed that not unto them, not for their period of time, but to us. They ministered this. Hmm? That's why the Holy Ghost was sent from heaven. So, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, you don't have to go there, we're going to go to 2 Peter now. It says, as we all behold in a mirror the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are all being changed from glory to glory into the very image of the Son of God. Okay? Keep that in mind as we go to 2 Peter. Simon Peter, again to them that have obtained faith. Say, I got faith. Now remember by our faith, through our faith, by the power of God, something is kept for us in heaven. We, who are in heaven? You that are dead and raised with Christ. You are in heaven. Christ, raised, Christ was raised from the dead, seated in heaven. You were raised from the dead, seated in heaven. 
So if you then be risen with Christ, set your mind on the things above. Think on a different kind of life. Don't think, oh, when I die, how am I going to die? How am I going to look like in my coffin? You know, how am I going to look like when they throw flowers on my tomb? What's going to happen to me? You know, three months later, how am I going to, a skeleton going to look? Are they going to dig me up for scientists, you know? <laughs> Verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. Now remember, we must gain knowledge. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all, All that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. Oh, somewhere in glory land. Oh, where's glory land? Glory land, sweet glory land. Where's glory land? Huh? Where's the glory going to be revealed? In us. He says, in us, through us. So how can you go to glory if it must be revealed in and through you? So when you go to it, oh, it was supposed, it was kept there for you. Now you're running from it to get to it, and you're leaving it actually behind because it's been kept through faith by the power of God, through the resurrection of Christ, which is an inheritance in the saints. So where do you want to run to? That's why the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes, he's bringing back the dead with him. So when this all happens, he's going to jump people out of the tombs. Bam. Whereby are given unto us great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So you become godlike, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He says that we might be partakers. Of the divine nature. Oh, of course, but you know, our natures and our natural man. Hey, the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. But we are not natural or carnal. We are spiritual. But Paul says to the Corinthian church, baptized, spiritful believers, you are yet carnal. So this is for people who believe they are risen. Not just for those, oh, I died with Christ. What about risen with Him? Oh, my old life is dead. What about your new life risen? You see, we've got so much excuses. Yeah, but that's just my old man, you know. You know, today at the traffic light, my old man just jumped out of the grave, man. When that guy pulled in front of me, you know, and he skipped the... Red lights, and you know, and you know, and you skip, you know, and you know, my old man just jumped up. No, we buried my old man, and we buried my old man, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we might, we can be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption. that is in the world. World. The corruption that is in the world through lust. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 through 56, not directly quoted, I'll just abbreviate it. He says, the first man, Adam, was the first man. Let's put it here. I must explain this. We have Adam, the first man. The first man, Adam, was of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. 
as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. He says, we shall bear it. He says, I show you a mystery. I'm just going on. We shall not all die. It's a mystery. I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. But we shall all be changed. We shall not all die. Here he says, people are weak, sick, and die because they do not discern the body. So we shall not all die. So somebody's going to discern what this body is all about somewhere in the history. He says, then this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Then the proverb shall come true. Oh, death, where is your sting? So death will be swallowed up by life. For the power of death is in sin and the power of sin is in the law. So the first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As we bore the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I show you a mystery. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. He says, this corruption must put on incorruption. So if I have escaped the corruption, if I have an inheritance that is incorruptible, but it's an inheritance that's in the saints. So it's still a treasure that is hidden that's still a mystery. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says the life of Jesus must be made manifest in my mortal body. The life of Jesus. Hmm? Which, which Jesus? The Jesus before the cross? Or the Jesus after the cross? If it's the Jesus before the cross, I'm still in Adam. But if it's the Jesus after the cross, it's the Lord from heaven. That's why he sent his Holy Spirit from heaven. Hmm? How did the Holy Spirit come? After Jesus disappeared. So where's Jesus? Okay, so we are in him and he's in us and our life is hidden with him in God. Oh, this is confusing. Not when you read on. Okay, let's go. He says, as by one man, sin entered into the world and through sin, Death entered upon all. So by one man, one man, one man. So by one man's obedience, righteousness came upon all. So that we might reign in life in Christ Jesus. Because he says there, we are justified to life justified to live but we got to first escape the corruption that is in the world through lust this corruption is in the world what is corruption where do we see corruption comes in after death that's why in death he saw no corruption because when you die corruption steps in but he says this corruption must put on incorruption. Oh, but if corruption only comes after death, how can I relate this to me and have an inheritance that's incorruptible? I'll read it to you. First John 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is in the world. Okay. We must escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay. He calls it the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. By one man, sin came, and through sin, death entered. Where? Into the world. So death goes on to corruption. I'm going to try my best. 
Adam and Eve is in the garden. The devil, Satan, the old serpent, comes to you and says, Look. Ah. Eat. Ah. You'll be like God. <coughs> Did you see it? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Look. Eat it. And you'll be like God. This corruption, death. One man, Adam, sin, death came. Is in the world through lust. Who, what is this lust? It's not your lust. It's Adam's lust. It's Eve's lust. It entered into the world through the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It's not of God, but it's in this world. Let's close with Hebrews 9. Verse 8. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest whilst as the first tabernacle was still standing. Now Revelation 21 verse 3 says the tabernacle of God is now with men. John chapter 14, Jesus went, prepared his place, came back and now he and the Father dwells in and with us. So when I invited Christ into my life, I invited God. When I said, Jesus, come into my life, I could have just as well said, wash me in your blood. I've got his wash as well says, God be my all. I could have said anything. The thing is, something spiritual must happen to me that make me know that I'm a new creation. I must understand I'm in Christ. To get into him, I had to die from the old man, Adam. Corruption through lust. I had to enter into incorruption through the resurrection, which is the divine life, which is inheritance in the saints. Not for and to the saints, in the saints. How do I get inheritance? Somebody died for me. Who died for me? Christ. To give me what? Life. So what is my inheritance? Life. Life. Is Jesus dead? But he did die. To do what? To leave me an inheritance. Okay. Let's just read on. Now remember, the holiest of all is the deepest part of the temple. If the temple is his body, and I am now the body, where is the holiest of all? Where is Christ? In me. So what am I? The temple. So where is Christ? Inside the temple in the holiest. The holiest was not open while the first tabernacle was there. Because this can't be. Okay, Ephesians 2 verse 22 says, Amplified by, we are all built together to form a holy abode of God. Amplified would say, the holiest of all and ever abiding presence of God in the spirit. Okay, but Christ. Hmm? Become a high priest of good things to come. To come. Okay? Ages to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. In other words, not the temple of Solomon, neither the tabernacle of Moses. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in. Once into the holy, having obtained eternal redemption. For us, okay. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Jesus, come in into my life. Mm. So Christ entered in by his blood to bring eternal redemption. How am I redeemed? What did it do to me? Cleanse me from sin. Where was sin? In me. How? Through the corruption that is in the world through lust. The Adamic nature. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. What's going to be revealed? The glory. So where did Christ enter? Uh, okay. So let's try and go on. Let's try and go on. 
For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of heaven sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the puring of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ no cleanses us? Verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Wonder why they didn't translate that covenant. It's testament. It's not a covenant. A covenant is you've got to do a part, God will do a part. We haven't got a covenant, all the viewers by television. We haven't got a covenant with God. We received a testament from God. Jesus said, it's grace. So I can't do anything. We can't take, you know, any do's or don'ts. So it's a free gift. That's why it's a testament and not a covenant. He says, he's mediator of the New Testament. Let's go on. That by means of death, for the redemption, here it comes, of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Where's the inheritance? In the saint. What is it? The glory. What is it? The appearance of the Christ life. What is it? The divine night nature. When will it come? When we understand we can escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Adam lusted, death entered, corruption stepped in. Now, okay. In short, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Wherefore, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So Moses took it all, you know, saying this is the blood, verse 20, of the testament which God has enjoined to you. Moreover, he sprinkled both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Okay. He says, in the tabernacle, everything was cleansed by sprinkling of blood. Hmm? That was just a figure of the heavenly. Now, if the tabernacle of God is now with men, if we are now the temple, if we are the dwelling place, then God Jesus entered into a temple not made with hands. Were you made by hands? Okay, so listen to this. He sprinkled it with his own blood. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of a New Testament, and to the sprinkling of blood. So if we've come to the New Testament and the sprinkling of blood, who did the blood cleanse? Some furniture? Who was sprinkled with the blood? You. Who received the testament? You. Where's the inheritance? In us. Okay. Okay, he says, so. Okay. He says, so Christ had to enter in. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Wash me in your blood. So he came in, washed me, took Adam out, put Christ in. Hmm? Right? So. Am I heavenly or am I earthy? As I bore the image of the earthy, I shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Okay? So, but it is for ages to come. So previous generations could not understand this truth because it wasn't for their time. But now it is revealed to us. So if it's, if it's coming through now, then it means we are the generation. Are you ready now? Now listen to this. This is the best part coming. He says, for Christ is not entered into the holy made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Christ in me. I'm hidden with Christ in God. When he shall appear, I shall also appear with him in glory. So if Christ, if I go to the Father. Who's going to the Father? So, I have boldness now. So, who appears in the presence of God? I can't. I'll be killed. 
I'll beat it. So if I know the blood has now sprinkled me, Christ has now entered, then to appear in the presence of God for me. So, why not? Father. You know, whose who's father is he? The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? Who is the only begotten son? Jesus. Okay? So no man can come to the father but by me. Hmm? So if I understand it, how much more my prayer is going to be answered? If I say, Father, it's, uh, uh, my goodness. <laughs> it makes life just so much easier. It's by grace. That's why if you take this bread, this is my body, which is broken for you, the temple destroyed. But I'm going to raise it up. So if I eat it and swallow it, I believe if I eat it, I eat his flesh. And he says, if I do eat it, John 6, I shall never die. And if I do drink the blood, it does cleanse us from all sin. And it is the New Testament. What is the Testament? Inheritance. Where is it? In me. So every time I drink the blood, every time I eat the flesh, I confess Christ in me, blood cleanse me, temple cleanse appear in the presence of God for me. What happens? Prayers answer. Bam. When did the Father say no to Jesus? Just, oh, whoa, whoa. Just in the garden. Just in the garden. When he was going where? To die. Hmm? So who did he die for? For me. Is he now alive? Yes. So which life is now in me? Not Adam. Adam is corrupted through lust. Christ. So no corruption is alive forevermore. So if I now eat and drink the body and the blood, I confess, my goodness, New Testament, new life, temple cleansed, no corruption, inheritance in. So I can appear... And when Christ really appear, Christ meaning you are Christ, comma, the Son of God. So what is creation waiting for? The manifestation of the sons of God. So if Christ does appear, who's going to appear? We, with Him. Where? In glory. 